Yeah, guys, I am at Roman Bridge, a request stop uh, this morning, uh, and I'm going to have a look at the Conway Valley line. The uh, plan is, I think, um, the next train's due in about 20 minutes, so I'm going to take that. That's heading towards Blano so I'm going to take that. And then when it gets there, it'll just stop for a short while, and then we'll head all the way back up to Llandudno Junction, and then on past De Ganway up to Llandudno and the seaside. That should be a good little trip. The weather is reasonable at the moment. It's dry at the moment. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed for that. I'll see you when I get on the train. Cheers for now. Yeah, I, I was originally going to park up at Blanafest in New York and get mugged by the pain display machines, uh, but instead I decided to drive five minutes up the road and, yeah, just park here for free. Uh, no, there's only space for about four cars, though, so, yeah, it's at your own risk. And now Roman Bridge, or Roman Bride as it says on the bench here, is a request stop on the Conway Valley line, uh, the penultimate stop before Blana Fistinog when travelling south. Uh, the line is operated by Transport for Wales, who run about six trains a day, uh, about four on a Sunday. And I thought I might as well flag down the train to Blana for one very good reason alone, which you'll see in a moment. I would then stay on it as it formed the 11.35... Heading back up to Glandudno with an expected arrival time there of 12.47 in the afternoon. Yeah, it's a very quiet spot, isn't it? Um, for, for what is quite a large station building, actually, uh, built in 1879. There's no village here. It's just named after an ancient bridge over the nearby River Leda. Um, like many others, the station house is now privately owned, but it still retains many of its original external features. As well as a covered bench in the station building, uh, there is a modern shelter further along the platform. I preferred the old one, to be honest. Now, interestingly, uh, rail replacement buses don't call here, as I guess they're probably too big to get down the lane. And instead, passengers have to trudge up to the telephone box on the main road. Now, my train was going to be a little bit late according to the dot matrix board, so I had a little extra time to wander around. Then I found this old public payphone, which obviously seemed better days, hadn't it? And before long, though, uh, my train screeched into view. 150241, a two car class 150, a diesel multiple unit. I flagged it down and fortunately it stopped. I don't think they get many passengers catching the train to Blano from here. Well, passenger numbers overall in 2018-19 were only 1,094. And that dropped down to just 64 in 2020-21, which is like just over one a week, isn't it? No wonder it's one of the least used stations in Wales. Anyway, I was using it today, so I hopped on board and found a seat. Uh, next minute I know, the guard appeared, like out of nowhere. A bit like the shopkeeper in Mr Ben, I thought. And I bought my ticket, and uh, we made our way down to Blana Vista, New York, uh, where we made a quick turn round, and um, headed back up the line. I note here that the station is shared with the popular and very scenic Festinio Railway, uh, which takes you down to the coast and the town of Porth Maddock. Uh, looking at the scenery here, you can see that the whole area is littered with the remnants of the old slate mines. And it's just everywhere you look, isn't it? Now, quarrying for slate reached its peak in the 1860s and 70s. And of course, both the Festinial Railway and the Conway Valley Line were originally built to transport the product to waiting ships on the coast at Port Maddock and uh, De Ganway, respectively. In order for the Conway Valley Line to reach its final destination, workers had to tunnel under nearby Moldugnorgiv, and this is the attraction I was referring to earlier on. Because this tunnel, uh, the Festinial Tunnel to give it its proper name, is actually the UK's longest single track tunnel currently in use, at a whopping 3,407 metres long. Now how long do you reckon it takes for our train to go through it? Well let's find out shall we?
By the way, I think Transport for Wales have done a good job in refurbishing these trains. They're nice and bright on the inside, and the seat maquette is clean and fresh. Now, I think red, white and grey is a good choice, and it goes well with the exterior of the trains too. Much better than the old Arriva colour scheme it replaced, in my opinion. OK, we're out. Um, just over four and a half minutes. And no wonder it took six years to build that tunnel. And so, yeah, back to the seats. Um, now there's decent enough padding in the vertical and horizontal sections and a drop-down armrest in between. The legroom is a bit tighter in the airline style seating but I've seen worse. There's decent rack storage above the seats and it's good to see plenty of conventional and USB power socket availability as well. That ventilation as you can see is simply provided by the opening of the window, the best way I think. Right, uh, let's head up the line past Roman Bridge without stopping uh, to the next station en route, uh, which is Dol Widellen. Uh, we soon arrive into Betsikoid, uh, which is probably the most touristy station on the route, I would say, and right in the heart of the Snowdonian National Park. But if you like walking, uh, this is the place for you, uh, but the town is also quite famous for its spectacular Swallow Falls. And as we leave the station, uh, look to the right and you will see the Conway Valley Railway Museum and its miniature railway. The valley is really opening out now as we head further north from Flanoust. Um, the River Conway is now quite wide, though you can easily imagine where sea levels must have been in days gone by. And now we arrive at Talu Cavern, uh, which I think is the prettiest station on the line in my opinion. And it's so well kept isn't it here? Even though the trains no longer stop on the western platform, the passing loop was removed back in the 1960s unfortunately. Now the station is unmanned, but uh, did you notice the level crossing there? Uh, that is still worked by hand. So let's have a look at the accessible toilet on board, and yeah, it looked quite smart I thought, with a uh, full length mirror and additional mirror above the sink, which was illuminated in blue. The soap and water was dispensed there, but the air dryer didn't seem to work. I'm not really a fan of having to use toilet paper to dry my hands, to be honest. The toilet flushes here with an additional button above um, for what was I'm not quite sure. It seemed to have some sort of spray bottle motif on the button. 
uh, baby changing facilities were nice and clean, uh, located above the bin, uh, where I was able to throw away my hand drying material, and, and that was that really. Uh, reasonably okay, apart from the hand dryer. After running alongside the estuary for a while, we arrive at Llandudno Junction, uh, which is on the North Wales coastline between Crewe and Holyhead. An important junction this, and one of the busiest stations in North Wales, with four operational platforms at the time of this recording. Now we're using Platform 3 today, and after a brief stop we proceed on our way, crossing the eastbound mainline track and branching off north towards Diganway. There are some fantastic views here looking back across the estuary towards Conway and the imposing Conway Castle. You can just make out the road bridge in the distance but these days traffic through Conway is much alleviated following the construction of a tunnel which passes underneath the water pretty much where we're looking out from now. Uh, Deganway is another beautiful little station with equally fantastic views. Uh, check out the footbridge here as we pass underneath. The price I paid for today's journey was £9.30, and that's basically a normal adult day return from Blanafistiniog to Llandudno and back. And not bad value for money, I don't think, for a journey which is over an hour each way. As we approach Slandabno, uh, look at how big the platforms are and where the tracks used to be. And it was clearly a very busy station back in its day, with a total of five platforms then. And you can imagine the summer specials arriving back in the day with hundreds of holiday makers heading for the beach. Uh, sadly, platforms four and five have been disused since 1978, and many of the station's original buildings have been demolished too. And nevertheless, it is still quite an impressive terminus in my opinion, and it's still quite popular with tourists, with the town itself boasting a pier, a long promenade, and the natural beauty of the Great Orm, which has some interesting modes of transport all of its own. As I got off the train into the fresh sea breeze, I took a minute to sum up the journey along what I think is one of the most scenic railway lines in Wales. There you go guys, uh, I don't know. So it was a nice trip that isn't it? It's about an hour and a little bit, something like that. Some beautiful scenery on the way. Make sure you sit on the left hand side of the train if you're coming up from Blanafest in the York. Yeah, fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I've got a couple of hours now to have a look around uh, from Dudno. So uh, yeah, blue skies, sun is out. Let's enjoy it and I'll catch you on another adventure soon. Uh, cheers for now. <laughs>